Today, Great.com talks with Josh Lay, who is Chief Marketing Officer at PinkySwear.org. If you haven't heard of them, they are a nonprofit organization helping kids with cancer and their families with financial and emotional support. If you're new here to this podcast, please press subscribe on YouTube or in your podcast app, because today we'll learn how Pinky Swear are helping families with child cancer. Hi, Josh. Welcome to our podcast. Hi, Peter. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, so are we. So how was your day going? So far, so good. I've had several cups of coffee, so I'm ready to roll on this Monday. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm back in Sweden. We're approaching evening here, but it's it's going to be uh, bright, the daylight for a long time here now. So Excellent. it won't get dark yet. Uh, when I read about your, your website, uh, the name, I was curious about the name, Pinky Swear. And so when I read about the name, it was quite a heartwarming story. Can you please tell tell our listeners about that? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, Pinky Swear Foundation is, is a unique name. And we were founded back in 2003 after um, a very selfless, humble nine-year-old boy who was diagnosed himself with terminal bone cancer made a really beautiful promise with his father. So in 2002, uh, Mitch Chapokas was diagnosed, as I mentioned, with terminal uh, bone cancer. And while he was in the hospital, he was overhearing families from other rooms talk about how, you know, cancer treatment is so expensive and they may not be able to afford holiday presents this year. It was around Christmas time um, that Mitch was in the hospital and that broke Mitch's heart, hearing that other families would not be able to celebrate the holidays um, while going through such a traumatic experience. And so he looked at his dad and he said, Hey dad, so I have money in a savings account, correct? And his dad's like, you do? Mitch said, so I, that's my money. I can do with it whatever I want, right? His dad kind of looked at him like, yeah, what are you thinking? He's like, all right, let's go and empty out that account. So he went to the bank and emptied out his entire life savings and ended up putting $100 bills in envelopes and anonymously distributing them to all of the other families on his pediatric oncology floor. And he wanted to do this anonymous, anonymously. So many of the families were asleep or out of the room at the time. And once he slid that last envelope through the door, he and his dad kind of raced back to the elevator to get back to his room. And he said, dad, that was amazing. I loved, loved, loved doing that. Can we do that again next year? We have to do that again next year. And Mitch's parents were pretty honest with him about his diagnosis and his prognosis. And his dad looked at him and said, you know, Mitch, buddy, I'm not sure that you're going to be here next year. And so in that moment of deep reflection and pause, Mitch looked at his dad and said, okay, dad, if I am not here, I need you to pinky swear promise me that you will always help kids with cancer even after I'm gone. And so here we are about 18 years later, and we are still upholding uh, that original pinky swear promise between Mitch and his dad. Yeah, that's that's so uh, incredible story, a heartwarming. Mm -hmm. I wish more kids or people would be like Mitch. I mean, just then we would have less problems in the world. Absolutely. And I mean, for a nine-year-old boy to be so forward thinking, um, I'm sure he had no idea that uh, because of that promise, he's been able to help, you know, almost 18,000 families uh, with child battling cancer. And so we're very grateful for that initial yeah, promise. Yeah. Uh, is, uh, is Mitch's father, uh, Steve, is he still involved in the, in the organization? Yep. So Steve's parents, Becky uh, and Steve, are still very involved. They are on our emeritus board. And so they help to make sure that we continue to fulfill that promise. Um, but they've also sort of stepped away a little bit. They have uh, new grandchildren and are excited to sort of go on that next journey of life, guiding, guiding that generation. Okay. So explain to me, what, what, does, what does your organization do? Absolutely. So Pinky Swear Foundation, we have a mission, as you mentioned, of helping kids with cancer and their families with financial and emotional support. So what that means is, you know, there are so many 
incredible organizations out there working on research and in the medical community to solve the core root of childhood cancer. But there are very few that are focusing on families now problems. And so what we do is when a child is diagnosed with cancer, we help a family pay their mortgage, their rent, uh, make sure that they can put groceries on the table for their entire family, gas in their car to get to and from treatment safely. So we really try to help families with that immediate need uh, that they have just to continue on. Uh, and also then they can focus all of their energy on what's most important, which is their child's health. Okay. So you don't, you don't take care of any medical bills or, or I'm sorry, you don't take care. You don't pay any medical bills. You just focus on. Correct. Yep. So we don't pay medical bills. Um, there are again, a lot of great organizations that are focused on medical care and depending on insurance, um, families don't necessarily need that type of support. Um, but what we've heard is a lot of times a family, when they're going through this childhood cancer journey is a parent will typically have to, reduce their hours at work, if not quit their job completely to become a full-time caregiver. So as those medical expenses or just life expenses like rent and mortgages continue to be in need, their income is significantly cut in half, mm -hmm. if not more. And so we try to go and be a, a meaningful bridge between um, all of their financial situations. And, and how, how is that? How do you do that? How do you give them money for, for that? Absolutely. So all the families apply. Um, we have what's called our all-star fund. All of the, all of the children with cancer that we support, we call them all-stars because they are. And so our all-star fund really is meant to be that purpose. So that bulk of our financial giving. Um, so families will apply and we will uh, distribute grants and award grants as we're able to. So we have a very simple model at Pinky Store Foundation. The more money in that we can raise, the more money out that we can support families. And so it really is a month by month uh, basis on, you know, how much funds do we have to distribute to families? Um, so far this year in 2021, we haven't had to say no to any eligible families. So we're really grateful that so far we've been able to help every family that's applied this year. Is that because of a few applications or, or do you have enough money? Oh, no, we have actually seen through the global pandemic an incredible increase in the amount of requests for support. And so um, obviously this pandemic has hit everyone um, in a really challenging way. But families with uh, dealing with childhood cancer, you know, those are immunosuppressed children. So their need is greater than ever. And we have just been very fortunate that we have a really strong community of donors and supporters. And so, so far to date um, in 2021, we've been able to help every family, but the need is always there. And quite honestly, the need is getting greater and greater every day. Mm, yeah, I understand. Yeah, that's, uh, that's true. Uh, let me see. The, the, who is eligible for, for, for applying? Sure. So anyone um, in the U.S. is, avail is uh, eligible to apply. Um, the really the only requirements that we have is that their child is 21 or younger and going through active treatment. Uh, so what that means is they're actively being treated for whatever their diagnosis is. Um, and we know that with childhood cancer, there are so many different types. And so every treatment plan is a little bit different. So we try to be as flexible and accommodating as we possibly can, uh, knowing that all of these families' journeys are incredibly tough. So, but if somebody applies and, and gets the fund, uh, is there like a monthly payment or, or is it one time or how, how do you? Yeah, so our application process is on a monthly basis. And so each award is granted for just one month. Now families can absolutely apply more than one time um, if they need, but we are really meant to try to help as many families as possible. And so um, sometimes we're able to help a family, you know, two, three times in a single calendar year. But oftentimes, um, most of our support is focused on one family at one time. Um, so that's, that's really how our application process goes. Um, we typically will see anywhere between 75 and 150 applications every month for our All-Star Fund. And um, so, the, like I said, the need is extremely great. Um, we do have another program 
uh, um, focused on financial, and that's called our Orange Envelope Program. And what that program is meant to do is really support families in those early stages of their childhood cancer diagnosis. So if when their child is diagnosed within six months, they can apply for this program. We do uh, really do everything that we can to never say no. So we have said yes to every single family throughout the history of Pinky Swear that has applied to our Orange Envelope program. And it really is a smaller financial gift. So it's usually a gift card anywhere between $100 and $200. It's um, just something to get them by. Uh, but it's also a letter from our founders, from Steve and Becky Chipokas. Um, There's a guide in there with some of our other resources, as well as some other sort of encouraging, uplifting notes. The purpose of that program really is to make sure that families know that they are not alone in this journey um, and that we are here to support them however we can. Yeah, that, that must be very helpful for, for all families to, to, to get that support. Absolutely. You have something called Pinky Swear Pantry. Can you explain about that? Yeah, absolutely. So we have an incredible community of volunteers and corporate partners as well. And our pinky partner or our pinky pantries, excuse me, um, is essentially uh, pantries in children's hospitals across the country. So we have two located in the Twin Cities of Minnesota, one down in Des Moines, Iowa, and another in Charlotte, North Carolina. And we are looking to expand that as much as we possibly can. And so what we know again from families is that oftentimes when they're diagnosed and they're in the hospital, it's really expensive to go and Uber food or you know, eat out at restaurants all the time because they're oftentimes not close to home. Um, sometimes even the cafeteria food at children's hospitals can be really expensive or their hours are not conducive to schedules. And so this is a, a place where we have um, a variety of sort of non-perishable foods that families can go and just grab and go um, anytime that they need it. So there's granola bars, there's popcorn, there's all sorts of things that families can just grab and go for quick snacks. Um, another element to the pantries are that, you know, it provides these kids, these all-stars, um, the freedom of choice. You know, many of these kids don't get to choose whether or not they lose their hair They don't get to choose whether or not they get poked and prodded with needles all day or what types of treatment they have to go through. But they can have the choice if they want, you know, an apple granola bar or a blueberry granola bar, or if they want mac and cheese versus popcorn. And that freedom of choice and the ability to make a decision for themselves is really powerful. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, what, what, uh, What is the vision for your future for, for PinkySwear.org? That's a great question. Um, so our vision for Pinky Swear is to say yes to every family that applies for support. And so, as I mentioned before, we're getting really close to that. Last year in 2020, even during a global pandemic, we helped uh, support 94% of the families that applied for our All-Star Fund. So we're getting really close, but that 6%, you know, is still a, a fairly large uh, dollar figure. And so our vision is to continue to raise more money uh, through our incredible donors so that we can say yes to every family. Um, we are actually just wrapping up our current strategic plan. And right now, from a financial standpoint, our goal is to give out at least $1 million to families in direct financial support every year. We did it last year. And so that is one of our biggest visions moving forward is to continue to support families in that way. Yeah. I guess, I guess Mitch is pretty pretty proud right now over his father. Absolutely, absolutely. And because you know Mitch was nine when he first made that original pinky swear promise, we have a really strong um, sort of sub mission, if you will, of kids helping kids. Another really big component to pinky swear is empowering youth to feel like they can get out into their community, make a difference, um, and so that's another big piece that we have. And so. Two programs that we have at Pinky Swear Foundation around kids helping kids is our Youth Leadership Council. And that is a group of extremely passionate and dedicated junior high and high school kids or middle school students um, who are volunteering to support kids with cancer. They're helping to raise money through lemonade stands and give back nights at local restaurants, things like that. You know, they're writing letters of encouragement uh, that we include in those orange envelopes so that 
these all-star students uh, or kids know that they're not alone. We also launched a new program this past summer with our college group. Um, it's called our Pinky Swear Pack. Um, and right now we have about 175 uh, college and university campuses across the United States that are focused on volunteering, raising money to help kids with cancer as well. And so that's a brand new program that we just launched last year. And we are really excited to keep that moving forward. Okay. Are these uh, kids or, or youths, uh, do they ha have they had like cancer themselves or any in their families or not connected? That's a great question. And some have and some haven't. You know, I, the Youth Leadership Council in particular really was founded a about six years ago. And so we're continuing to move that forward. But a lot of the students that participate in that program don't necessarily have, you know, a family history of childhood cancer, but they do have, you know, maybe it's an extended family member. It might have been a friend at school or someone okay. in their community yeah. that they know has been affected. And so, um, yeah, so these students kind of have all different backgrounds and walks of life. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, we're actually running out of time soon, and uh, uh, I have a question. Uh, what can uh, someone do to, to help? What action steps can someone do to, to help you? Absolutely. So Pinky Store has a variety of opportunities for people to get involved with our mission. You know, obviously going to uh, www.pinkysore.org is going to be the, the first step in really learning more about what we do to help kids with cancer and how you can get involved. Um, donations, of course, are always appreciated, and that's really how we're able to fulfill uh, all of those all-star fund requests and orange envelope requests. But we also have, as I mentioned, letters of encouragement. We have incredible volunteer opportunities where people can send in notes um, that say things like, you are strong, I'm with you on this journey. And that's been a really powerful tool um, and just element for our all-stars and their families. So, so many different ways to get involved, and we're really excited to have this opportunity to share that with all of your, your viewers and listeners. Okay, Josh, thank you very much. For you listening, if you enjoyed this episode, press subscribe on YouTube or in your podcast app. That will show the algorithms how this is an important conversation, so more people can learn about how to help child cancer families with emotional and financial support. Thank you, Josh. Awesome. Thank you both so much.